and welcome back. Now today we're going to talk about absolute fundamentals when it comes to Arduino. Like, I'm a beginner, where do I start? There's a million things I could buy there on the internet. What exactly do I need? Right, number one, what you need is an Arduino compatible board, like this one. It's not the original Arduino, great as though they are, they are also very expensive. The original Arduino cost you something like £20, $25 or so, it's too much for me. Buy this one from the Far East, that's Hong Kong, Malaysia, Singapore, something like that, go onto eBay, you'll find thousands. They cost literally 4 to $5, this sort of size. This is an Arduino Uno compatible. Now they do come in slightly different sizes and flavours, so this next one here, this one is a Nano. If I can get this in focus for you, I'll be very happy. There we are. There, that's um, a Nano, and it's exactly the same electronically as this bigger one that I'm holding up in the background, but it's just in a much, much smaller form factor. Now, why would you, why would you want to have two different sizes? Well, basically, this one's great for developing with, but as a finished project, it, this is rather big to be quite honest. In a day where we're trying to micro miniaturize everything, this is a little bit big unless you happen to have loads and loads of space. So you develop with this sort of size board and then you finish it off, actually connect up to this in your finished project. And it works great. They're exactly the same. So why would you buy this one as opposed to this one? Well, there's one good reason and you can see it on this little project board behind me here. I've got, I'll just bring this up to the camera a little bit, I've got here a Nano, that is to say one of these little small boards here, that actually plugs into a base board, an expansion prototype board, to give myself room while I'm developing. Now that means, in my finished project, I can take this Arduino Nano as the actual board itself, but while I'm developing, I've got loads of room to plug cables in and give myself a little bit of breathing space. Let's see exactly how this one looks like on the web today uh, for pricing and so forth. So I just thought I'd double check on where I bought that Nano and Breakout development board. And here it is, as you can see. This is um, a UK seller. In fact, it's uh, Scooterboy101. Um, now, £5.29 which is probably about $7.50, $8, something like that. Um, no, it's this, it's this board, which you can see here, which is quite good. It's exactly the same one as I showed you, plus the Nano, which is, to all intents and purposes, an Arduino you know in a much smaller package. So to get started, that's what I used, and I found it very easy to be able to plug in this, this um, tiny little board into the underlying development board. And for £5.29, as a starter, considering I'm never going to put these into a project, these are going to stay as my development type boards, I think that's pretty good. So there you've seen it, what we can get in the UK at least, and what a reasonable price that is. And it's not going to be a million miles different for those of you living in the United States or elsewhere. What else do you need, apart from a board of some kind, going forward? Right, the next thing you need is a breadboard. This is what's known as a half-size breadboard. Forget the cable for a moment. Um, they have plus and minus um, battery strips running across the bottom and top. And in the middle, they have strips running top to bottom for plugging in your components. Um, now, literally, this one cost me something like 99 pence from the Far East. Um, you have to wait a little bit longer when you order stuff from the Far East. I mean, I wait probably about a month, can wait six weeks. Did take two months and three days once out of all the hundreds of things I've ordered there. But the price is so good, I'm prepared to wait. If you want to buy this sort of thing locally, you can probably expect to pay twice the amount. But then again, if this is 99p from the Far East and it's £2 locally and you need it like this week, you know what to do. So order these breadboards. I mean, they all look the same, and if you buy two or three at a time, you see these little tiny indentations here on the side and lugs at this top. It means you can plug these boards together, and they, they sort of slot together, and you can make up either a smaller one or a bigger one as your needs dictate. But I find having a couple together like this works a treat. Now, the next thing you're going to need are cables. 
Here's a set of cables. These are known as DuPont cables. I don't know why. Probably manufactured by that name or invented by them. Now these are multicoloured cables. They're 20 centimetres in length. And the only thing you have to watch out for is what the ends are like. As you can see on this one, we've got pins at both ends, which means it can plug into a breadboard like this, no trouble at all. But what's the other end going to do? If you've got a pin on this type board, that's fine. But what happens if you've got a socket? A socket is fine for something like this. But what do I do on my other? What do I do when it comes to a board like this and I've got pins I want to connect to? Well, then you need to have DuPont cables that one end at least have got little tiny female sockets like this. So pins at one end, sockets at the other. That means you can plug stuff into your breadboard one end and plug the other end into the pins on your Arduino development board. So my advice would be go and grab yourself a strip of these. They come in normally 40 way. It's 40 individual cables all joined together like this and get a various selection, get pin to pin, pin to socket and socket to socket and then you won't go wrong. And once again, these are cheap. They're probably a dollar a pack, a pound maybe, and you simply unzip them. If you want three cables in one go, like these three here, you'd literally just peel them off and then you've got three that are attached together. So simple. So there we have it, the absolute fundamentals that you'll need for starting an Arduino project. My next video is going to talk about a couple of the peripherals you might want to connect to and the next video after that will be talking about the IDE, the Interactive Development Environment. Simplicity itself, you can't go wrong, so stay tuned and thanks for watching. I hope you found that interesting as a very basic introduction to what the Arduino can offer you. Now, if you do find it interesting, please remember to subscribe by clicking that little button down the bottom, add your comments down underneath, and I'll get back to you if I possibly can. Okay, stay tuned for the next video, and don't forget, subscribe now!